ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to a very special quarantine edition of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. I'm your host, Lewis Spears, and uh, I'm, uh, I'm at home. I'm working from home. I've been at home for the last week because I'm sick, but I'm not eligible to be tested, so I don't fucking know what's going on. Basically, I am just acting as if I have it, and if I have it, great. That's good. I'm home. I'm all good. If I don't have it, even better, right? That's great. That Actually, I would rather that I fucking have it. Here's the thing, right? So, three weeks ago, I go out and I do some fucking gigs, yeah? And I'm not trying to alarm anyone. I'm fine, right? I have a normal flu, okay? I feel fine. It's not that bad. So, I hope I have it, because if this is it, bro, what are all these fucking pussy old people dying over, huh? The cowards. <laughs> it's a, uh, not, it doesn't phase me at all. I'm an at-risk person. I've got asthma. I'm sweet. Right? Three weeks ago, I go out. I do three huge gigs back in Melbourne City. In the city, all of them. Maybe 300 people all up. Right? One of them's to older people. One of them's to uni people. Now, here's where I think I got it. Okay? I'm shaking 300 hands. i got a weird fucking job. Right? No one else is out there shaking this many hands. Not even prostitutes are, sh- are like touching this many other people. Like, let's let's be real. I'm, I'm, I reckon I must have one of the highest skin contact uh, businesses in the world. Other than uh, a masseuse. But even then, I don't think a masseuse touches 300 people a day. So I still think I'm up there, you know? Like, I think that being a comedian or, or, or even, you know, a musician doesn't shake the hand of everyone, everyone who comes because a musician's cool and they have a backstage and they have groupies who flash their tits during the show. If somebody pulled their tits out during one of my shows, okay, they would get evicted, perhaps. Actually, no, I definitely wouldn't kick them out. I would thoroughly appreciate that because it would be very funny. However... Um, a lot of my shows are all ages, so there would be a couple of uh, scarred 15-year-old boys that you would have to answer to the police to. No, I take that back. One time I did get flashed when I was performing. I remember I got flashed one time. Uh, I was doing a gig at uh, Brunswick Hotel, and there was maybe 60 people there, and uh, one of the people there was a stripper. And uh, we were having a bit of banter. She heckled me because I was saying some jokes that she said were sexist. But in reality, they were funny. That's what I get for performing in fucking North Melbourne. You know, you tell one joke about women and every chick with blue hair and a front fringe goes, Um, actually, bitch, shut up. All right? You know it's true. Um, she uh, uh, said she was a stripper. And then I was like, no, uh, really? And then she goes, yep. And then she flashed her tits at me. Now, if I did that to her, <laughs> I would be fucking arrested. Now, what I'm saying here, guys, we're getting off track, okay? I've, I'm in self-isolation. I've done the right thing, okay? So I performed to a bunch of uni kids. 100, 100 uni kids. It was that gig that I yelled about on the podcast, the hell gig, right? All those uni kids. If, if, if you thought that gig couldn't get any worse... Apparently it can, it can give you a communicable disease, right? So I do that gig, and then I shake everyone's hand and think nothing of it. Now, they were all, all those uni kids were celebrating O-Week. What does that mean? That means that they just are about to start studying. What does that mean? They just had their fucking holiday. All of those cunts probably just got home from mainland China. They've been eating bats. Shaking my hand, they probably got back from fucking Italy, from Europe, everywhere. They were all those international travelers straight back to Melbourne, Shaking my hand, now I'm sick. So, I'm fine. To anyone worried about me, I am. I am sick, but I'm fine. You know what I mean? Like, I, I like to me. I I don't know if I, I. Okay, I'll tell you my symptoms. I got no runny nose. I had very bad headaches. Um, I had a, a bit of like a like a tickle in my chest, in my lungs, and then yesterday I was coughing. Today I am not. Uh, yesterday I had a runny nose all day. Today I do not, and I haven't had it for any of the other days. Um, if I walk around, I get a little, bit, little bit puffed. Uh, and then for two days I spent in bed, and then I haven't been in bed, and I've been sick for about a week and a half. So it's definitely a weird thing. Um, so I don't know if it is. I don't want to say that it is. Um. Mainly because imagine if I said that it was and then it turns out that it wasn't and then I just fucking come across as this cunt who's capitalizing on it. Guys, I've got coronavirus. I need sympathy. Right? But I definitely am sick with something. And it's two weeks after I shook hands with like 400 cunts. So, I don't know. Bit suspicious. 
What's fucking frustrating about it is you can't get tested anywhere, even if you have symptoms. I got a lot of the symptoms. It's not bad, but you can't get tested. I called all the fucking hotlines. I called my local GP. I called all the hospitals. And if you haven't traveled, you can't get tested. And I was like, well, look, I could probably lie and say that I've traveled or lie and say that I've come in contact with somebody who does have it. But then I what am I just, I'm just taking a test away from some person who's got it and is actually very sick, you know, because even if I do have it, I'm kind of fine. So I don't really need to get tested, but it would be good to know because here's my thing. Let's say I've got it, right? Let's say I do have it. Yeah. But then I get over it, but I never get tested. So I never know that I had it. So I could be fucking, if we get locked down for six months, if I have it and I get over it, great. I'm immune. I'll go, I'll go run around, I'll, I'll fucking shake everyone's hand, do whatever I want to do, because I'm immune. But if I fucking never get tested and I get over it, I have to act as if I never had it. And I just, I'll just never know. So that's frustrating to me. Uh, but don't worry, I'm fine. Um, who knows what tomorrow will bring though, because I am an at-risk person with asthma. Fuck, it is a bit scary, isn't it? Italy is absolutely fucked. You know what I love? That Italy is completely locked down now and Italy's deaths are skyrocketing. Italy's deaths recently, as of today when I'm recording this Friday, Italy's death deaths just surpassed China's. Everyone's going, wow, China really got a handle on it. No, they didn't. They're cheating. They're just lying. Do you really think that China got a handle on it that quick? that no one else is dying from it. They're under-reporting their cases, absolutely. Because even if, right, even if China had the best response, which, let's be honest, they did because they're a dictatorship, that's the one benefit of a dictatorship, if the guy in charge goes, stay the fuck home, everyone does. You know? Our Prime Minister's been telling everyone to stay home for two weeks. Everyone's going up to the fucking shops, everyone's hanging out, people are on, people are having fun, going out clubbing, going out drinking walking around every day. I went in, I was in a car yesterday driving around. The whole, nothing's changed. Everyone is just doing their normal shit and going, oh fuck, I hope I don't get it. Scott Morrison's going, guys, please stay home. Everyone stay home. There's a deadly virus. And everyone's like, oh, I sure do love cappuccinos and walking and and going ha 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 in front of my friend's faces. Right? Where Scott Morrison is fucked up is he should have just started shooting people in the street. That's really how you get a handle on this thing, huh? That's what China did, you know? If their results are to be to be to be, if their results are to be believed, you know, the only reason their test results are so good is because if you leave the house, you're getting shot. They'll you know, if, if you fucking if they find out that you have a dog, they'll break into your home, take it out by force and kill it in front of your children. You know? Meanwhile, Scott Morrison's like, Hello, Australia. Please stay home. That's where he fucked up. I feel like, I feel like, really, realistically, Scott Morrison couldn't be hated any more than he is right now. He might as well just become a dictator. We would probably like him more. We would at least expect, uh, uh, you'd have to respect the confidence, you know, and the authority and the power. I, I would rather be feared than hated. Right? So that's that's my that's what I want everyone to take away from this fucking podcast. Scott Morrison, if you're listening, I know you listen. I know you're a frequent listener of the show. Why are you taking all of our shit? All right? You fucked up with the fires. You are absolutely fumbling this COVID-19 nonsense. It's time to just accept reality and realize that people will only respect you if you start killing civilians in the street. That is the only way that you're ever going to be respected and Australians will ever listen to what you have to say is if you start dragging out women and children and shooting them in the street in front of their husbands. That's the only way Scott Morrison's going to get any respect. Let's be honest. Did anybody like Hitler before he became the Chancellor? No. No one liked him. Right? He got, he got, he couldn't get laid. He got fucking kicked out. No one was buying his art. He had no mates. His parents didn't like him. He wasn't particularly good in the army. Every single revolution he tried to start was met with with bitter failure. He went to jail. He wrote a book. No one really liked it. It only became a bestseller when he said, buy it or I'll kill you. 
right? That was the only time people were like, you know what, this Adolf guy's all right. Because if you didn't think he was all right, you'd be in a hole. So that's what I'm saying. Scott Morrison, the only way to recover from this absolute fumble in your leadership is to start murdering civilians. And I think that all of us listening to this podcast can agree that that is a good thing. <laughs> like, really, he needs to become scarier than coronavirus. This shit's wild, man. You know what I fucking hate the most about this, this shit is that Scott Morrison and all of the fucking political people here in Australia, all of the doctors, everyone was like, this virus is coming. We see it in China. We see it in Italy. It is coming here. And we were ahead of it. And ScoMo goes out and goes, guys, buy two weeks of food. They told us to do that. They told everyone to buy two weeks of food. So you know what I did? I bought two weeks of food, all right? I got all my fucking pasta. I got all my pasta sauce. I got all my canned tuna and I got canned baked beans. I don't have to leave the house for two weeks. And if I have it, that is a great thing, right? I don't know if I have it, but if I do, I'm home. I'm not giving it to anybody. The only virus I'm communicating is this podcast, (laughs) right? So that's great. But now, fucking a week after he told everyone to stock up on two weeks of food, there's no fucking food anywhere because he told the people but didn't tell the supermarkets. And now, everyone who's trying to stock up on food to feed their family is un-Australian. Hey, ScoMo, you know what's un-Australian? Not helping out with the fires and taking a fucking holiday while the country was burning. Not that you would be any help at all because you're currently here and you're doing fucking nothing. The whole country needs to be quarantined, bro. Everyone needs to be locked down for just two weeks. Let the hospitals catch up. Let the supermarkets work out online delivery. Let the old people fucking die and we'll be sweet. Um, I don't have the answers. All I have is coronavirus. <laughs> um, yeah, it is. It's a fucking, it's a weird time, man. I hope you, I hope you guys are all staying safe. Uh, I hope you guys haven't been hit hard too hard by, um, you know, all the economic side of things. Uh, firstly, stay the fuck away from your grandparents. Do not see them. Help them out. Leave food on their doorstep. Call them, text them, tell them, do not leave the house. Whatever you need, I will get for you. I'm doing that for my grandma. You should do it for your parents, grandparents, or even your parents, depending on how old you are. Um, make sure they stay the fuck home, no matter how, uh, f- I don't know. It's just weird. Um, yeah, I hope you guys aren't being hit economically by this. I fucking know that I have been absolutely raped by this shit. It is bad, man. So my whole entire year is fucked. I had the best year, the most masterminded fucking plan set up, ready to go. I was ready to fucking take over, graduate, elevate, take my shit to a new level. We released Spears vs. America, and then I was going to do the, then we did the regional tour, and then after that, I was going to do the comedy festival, and then after that, I was going to record my comedy special, and then after that, I was going to go to do a UK tour, and then after that, I was going to release my comedy special, and then after that, I was going to go hard online, and then after that, I was going to do fucking the comedy festival next year, and then hopefully America and UK again, and New Zealand. All of that is fucked. If you don't know, all of my live shows are cancelled indefinitely. Melbourne, all 23 of my shows have been cancelled. And I was doing 23 shows so that I could practice for the comedy special taping, which I now cannot do because I do not have the practice. And also the virus is probably still going to be going on by the time we had booked in the special. So I've had to cancel the taping of the special. Now that means uh, we've also had to cancel the UK tour because obviously there's going to be no international travel at all. And also, I don't really want to go to UK. That's where all of the fucking uh, virus is. Apparently, at the moment, you know, all you cunts with your open borders and your fucking united... What, what is it called? Oh, fuck. Brexit. British. European Union. All that shit? Bet you're not happy about that now, are you? Britain is laughing, bro. They're like, bro, we got the fuck out at the right time, didn't we? Now now that's some pull-out game. (laughs) 
So it's it's crazy, right? So my whole year is fucked. So like, look, conservative estimates, that is about two thirds, probably more than that of the income that I was going to make over the next 18 months. Gone. And not postponed. Gone. Because the comedy festival is not happening again. I could maybe do one Melbourne show in fucking December. Maybe. Gone. Right? Uh, But on the positive side of things, I'm always trying to look at things on the positive. And with every... Uh, with every negative, there is a positive. So, I don't know, maybe you guys can't work at your fucking cafe job. Or if you worked in events, maybe you're fucked as well. You know? If you worked at a movie cinema, I don't think you're going to be filling up the popcorn machine anytime soon. But, right, with every fucking negative thing, there is a positive. So, the positives for me and the positives for you. I am going... I, I You probably noticed it already. I have been going into fucking overdrive with my online content. If I can't tour, if I can't get on planes, if I can't fucking perform, I'm going to fucking smash this shit. So I've set up everything at home. I've got my home studio rolling. It's not going to look very pretty, but it's going to be funny as fuck as always, right? So I've got this podcast. If you're listening on Patreon, bam, up super early. Comes out every Sunday for all of you poor peasants, but everyone else, you know... Who wants to chip in a few bucks? Fucking hint, hint. <laughs> Had to refund a lot of fucking tickets, bro. Um, I'm kicking into overdrive. So, here's what's changing. I was going to um, hold back on cooking without instructions. That has changed. I was going to put that out uh, a few weeks after the comedy festival. That has now changed. Uh, comedy festival's gone, so cooking without instructions moving up a couple of months. Episode one is going to drop next week, and here's how it's going to be. I got twelve episodes ready to go, so I will be dropping one episode of cooking without instructions every single month. But Patreon supporters will get that shit a month early. So if you support me on Patreon, you don't get one episode; you get two early, right? And the second episode will come out for all of the for free in if we put it out in March it'll come out in fucking April um also I got a bunch of videos coming out I got a bunch of stand-up clips from the regional tour that I am pumping out I am absolutely smashing shit on Instagram TV getting all of my shit sorted I'm gonna blow up on TikTok it's all fucking happening um because right I want to entertain you guys throughout this I know all all you guys are going to be at home all you guys are going to be desperate for something to fucking watch something to fucking do and something to take your mind off the impending doom that is the invisible virus that might kill grandpa uh and uh I'm going to try and do that for you guys because uh I know that uh you guys will step up and be there for me when I need it uh because that's always been the relationship that we've had is you know I uh I give you everything that I have and then when I need a hand you guys step up and when you guys need a hand I give you everything that I have so uh that's all that's what it's going to be um I'm going to the only thing that's going to change is going to be fucking way more shit I'm actually very excited because you know what the thing is I mean you guys see it every time I tour my YouTube channel uploads go so now it it's almost kind of it's not a good thing. It's a very bad thing. <laughs> but but the positive side of it is is now, theoretically, I can focus on only YouTube without even writing a stand-up show, without even fucking planning what I'm going to do to tour, where I'm going to get the money to fucking record a comedy special. I can focus on just doing YouTube from home like when I started. So it's a bit of a return to, return to my basics and... Um, we're going to make the most of it, yeah? We're going to fucking uh, sit through this and get out the other side with uh, a bunch more people that watch my stuff and hopefully a bunch of entertainment for you guys as well. So that's coming. Don't you worry. I need to pause my camera because I don't have my podcast one. One sec. And another plus side of this fucking coronavirus shit is, holy shit, I never thought I would see the day, but all of these fucking Twitter outrage people have been silent. They've shut the fuck up. No one gives a fuck what gender everyone is. No one gives. No one's keeping tally of every new fucking gender, are they? No. No one cares anymore about any of that shit because the minute that the first world faces any kind of adversity, all of this social justice shit melts away because it's not fucking real. The minute a real thing happens, a real crisis, a real economic downturn, a real fucking pandemic happens to the first world... Everyone, all of a sudden, stops fighting 
for social justice and starts worrying about themselves. Because all of these fucking feelings and and cancelling cunts and being offended and yelling, it doesn't survive in this environment because it's not real. You know, I'm not saying that emotions aren't real. If you feel sad, of course that's real. But only to you, right? All this fucking fake outrage trying to cancel cunts and leading up, leading online armies to just destroy livelihoods over jokes or, or fucking, I don't know. All this kind of shit is just like melting away, which proves that it's just not real. And it's not a priority for any of these people who say that it is a priority for, because most of the time, all these people that are like putting themselves at the forefront of a social movement, they're not actually in it for the cause. They're in it for themselves right? Perfect fucking example of someone who's in it for the cause versus someone who's in it for themselves. Bernie Sanders, that guy is in it for the fucking cause, not for himself. Dude, that guy is in it for the fucking cause. He cares and he has cared and he has stayed consistent about every single fucking thing that he's speaking about since he was young. Now, I don't even really like his policies that much, right? I'm trying to be objective about the dude. I think that he has a lot of amazing ideas, but he has a lot of weird ideas, right? And also, I don't really understand American politics. I'm Australian, right? But I can respect that he has maintained a consistent position on pretty much all of his core beliefs since he started. And he has the evidence to back that up, right? He's for the cause, Someone who's not for the cause is all of the Democratic nominees that supported Biden. Right? Tulsi Gabbard, uh, Andrew Yang, they talked a big game, didn't they? Andrew Yang's like, oh, we need UBI. Tulsi Gabbard's the mostly similar to fucking Bernie Sanders. Even Elizabeth Warren, right? As much as she didn't like Bernie, her ideas and her policies were way more similar to Bernie than they were to Biden, right? But they weren't for the cause. They were in it for themselves. Andrew Yang endorsed Biden and took a job with CNN. Dude's in it for him. And that's just how it is. And that's... I'm not necessarily criticizing. That's not exactly a bad thing. I mean, I suppose it is bad. I suppose it is a bad thing. Because you're kind of misleading people. But I, 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 here's the thing. I'm not saying that it's good. I'm saying I understand it. It is so hard to be for the cause. You know what I mean? It's so hard. Do you know how fucking successful I could be if I just gave up on this independent shit and let cunts control me and just did what I was told and made the comedy that networks wanted instead of made the comedy that people wanted, right? I know for me that giving the people what they want long term, that's the long play. That's going to pay off in the long term, right? Look at Bernie Sanders. Cunt's running for president. I mean, he had to do it at 88 years old and he's going to die in a week. But he got there. It was the long play. He got shit on and shit on and shit on and the machine tried to stop him and the machine tried to stop him and he almost got there. And in the end, look, (laughs) maybe not the best example because the machine is bending Bernie over and fucking him in the ass right now. But, you know, he got to, to second place or third because he's not going to win dom- nomination. I say, you know, you come third, right? I know that giving the people what they want in comedy is ultimately going to pay off, right? Because I'm for the cause. That's what I'm for. I'm for real comedy. I'm for giving you cunts what you want and I'm not for uh, bending to, you know, offended people or this or that. I just want to make people laugh and that's all. Um, but I know that that's going to take much, much longer because I'm fighting against the fucking system and it will be so much easier to just sell out and be like, oh, fuck me and all my holes and just do what I'm told, but I'm for the cause. And that is much, much harder and much of a bigger risk thing to do. So you start to see all of these people that, you know, They said they were for the cause. You know, it's like the male feminist thing. I believe in equality. Three months later, you find they've raped three chicks. (laughs) 
because they were, they weren't for the cause. They were in it for themselves. They were attaching themselves to the cause to get benefit for them personally. That's how it works in a lot of communist countries. We're going to start a communist revolution for the workers and for the people. And the minute they get the power, fuck you guys. This is for me. Fuck the cause. I want to lift myself up. It's an it's not a good thing, but it's incredibly understandable because there are very, 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 very few people who fight for the cause and stay that way. You know what I mean? Um, dude, I love, uh, I love that people are... The only bit of like offensive shit that's kind of floating around, but not really, is people are angry at anyone for calling this the Wuhan virus, the Chinese virus. People are angry at anyone for calling it anything other than coronavirus or COVID-19. You can't say that it's the Chinese virus because that's racist. Hey. That's where it came from. Oh, what? We can't call it the Spanish flu anymore? We can't call it Ebola anymore? That's where it fucking came from. The Chinese virus, the Wuhan virus. Where did it come from? Wuhan. One of the most important things in fighting an infection, in fighting a pandemic, fighting a virus like this, is finding out where exactly it started. That's one of the very first things that you need to find out to fight a virus is where the fuck did it start so that we can quarantine that area and work out who's been there. Chinese virus. That's where it came from, right? That doesn't mean that Chinese people are fucking bad, right? All that means is that you probably shouldn't be eating bat. <laughs> I understand where they're coming from. I don't think that they are... Act- I-, I think their anger is misguided. You shouldn't be angry at people who are calling it the Chinese virus. You need to be angry at people who are angry at Chinese people for the virus. Because that is happening. I talked about it on my podcast like fucking three weeks ago, three or four weeks ago, maybe even earlier than that, when the virus was first starting in China. (laughs) Sorry. Sorry. Um, When it was first starting in China, I saw like uh, three black girls go, look at a Chinese guy and go, ugh, gross, don't cough on me. And that's, that was horrible, incredibly racist. Now, I didn't do anything because I'm a white person and when it's three black women yelling at an Asian guy, I don't know the power dynamic and neither does any white, white guy on that fucking train. So I'm not stepping in there because next thing I know, I can go, hey, leave that man alone. They'd both gang up on me. I'm on the news, cancelled. But who knows? right? So I think that's, I think that's what people are actually angry about. And rightfully so, is that a lot of people are using this pandemic as an excuse to be racist to Chinese people, which is not right, but understandable because when it's something like this, where the fuck do you direct your anger? You know, if you're at war, you can hate the enemy. If you're in a fight, you can hate that girl, right? If you have someone trying to stop you doing what you want to do, you can hate that person. When there's an invisible virus that doesn't, that isn't even an animal. Like imagine if all cows were trying to kill us. We'd be like, yeah, fuck cows. They suck, but it's just a virus. Who do you hate? Hard to band together as a society without an enemy. A lot of people are deciding that their enemies are Chinese people. Now, that's wrong. The real enemy here is the cunts who keep buying all the toilet paper. That's the fucking enemy. I was saying before that ScoMo's an idiot for telling us to buy two weeks of food and then criticizing us for it. But I will leave an exception to all the toilet paper. How much fucking toilet paper do you need? I know that every cunt has talked about this, right? But I just want to lay it out. How, for one person, right, how long does it actually take to go through a roll? I'm one of those people, I use a lot of toilet paper because I like to gift wrap my poos and I like to have, I like to be sparkling clean, right? I use a lot, okay? I don't think I've, I've ever seen a roll finish in like, I don't know, a week? It's hard to tell. 
Because I've never lived only by myself. I've always had my family around me. So I don't, I don't, I guess, you know what? I don't know how long a toilet roll lasts for one person. I just have no idea. Maybe I should Google it. How long does a toilet roll last? Surely a week, right? How long does one toilet roll last? Here we go. Having a look. Um, so, how long does the average roll of toilet paper? Five days. Oh, about a week. Okay, five days. Oh, hang on. In the average household, it lasts five days. So that's like more than one person, right? So one person, a toilet roll might last 10 days. So if you have fucking, I don't know, a 36 pack, 36 times 10, that's a year of toilet paper. Right? So what the fuck are you doing? Hoarding all this toilet paper doesn't make any sense. Such a weird time. Dude, straight up, I'm not going to apologize. But here's the thing. I went to the supermarket and I saw I w- I saw everyone buying toilet paper and I was like, okay, well, fuck, I don't need that. I can get that online, worst case scenario. And also, worst case scenario, if we get quarantined in our homes and we don't have toilet paper, guess what? There's a shower next to the toilet. Wash your ass there, right? If you get quarantined... You can't leave the house. You've got no food. You are just fucked. There is no alternative. I would rather have food and a dirty ass than a clean ass, but be dead. Don't you think? That's my priority. So I saw all the toilet paper running out and I was like, all right, game on. I'm stocking up on food. I got two weeks worth of pasta. I got two weeks worth of tuna. And I got two weeks worth of baked beans. That doesn't make me a bad person. That makes me prepared. I wasn't stocking up on a month, stocking up on two weeks, like the government ordered. It was so funny though, when I went to the supermarket, I reckon I did it on one of the last days that anyone could have done it. Because every time I've been to the supermarket since, right, before I started showing symptoms, I'm obviously not going to the supermarket now, right? But every time since, there's it's been bare shelves and everyone around me is just going, just coming up with nothing when they come back to the supermarket. It was so funny. I went to the supermarket and I got, I was like, okay, I've got my pasta, I've got my tuna, uh, that's like, that's, and I got, uh, a bunch of, uh, porridge. I got two packets of porridge that will last me a month. Two fucking packets of oats, dude, easily a month. So I'm good with that. I could have got five. I was like, do I need five? And then I thought about it in my brain. I was like, no, you know who needs five? Someone who's 70, right? Cause that's all they can fucking chew. So I was like, okay, cool. I got that. I got breakfast and I got lunch. I got dinner. I don't have lunch. So I'm like, all right, well, fucking, it's not ideal, but I guess baked beans will last. Baked beans and soup. Couldn't find soup. I'm like, all right, baked beans will last. Okay. So I go baked beans and there's fucking, there are six. There are six packs of three. So I see that and I go, fuck, six packs, three. That would do me. Ah, I won't get six because then someone else will just miss out. And I go up. And I go to get three, which is nine cans. It's not two weeks. It's nine days or whatever. I'm probably not going to eat baked beans every fucking day. There's other food at the house. So I'm like, that's essentially two weeks. That's all I need. So I go up and I get three. And then this one guy comes up to me real close, like really, really insinuating with his body language. Hey man, I want some cans of beans. Like really? He was like, hey man. I don't know why he talked like that. That's in my head. That's how he talked because he was too much of a bitch to say, hey man, can I get a... He was just standing there and looking at me like, hey, could I... Please sir, can I have some beans? Right? Real beta bitch move. Now, I... What I... I, I, I was so... I could have done this. I, I was going to say it was my right. It wasn't my right. It would be a cunt thing to do. But I absolutely could have grabbed all six, looked at him in the face and gone... <coughs> and then he just would have gone... Oh. Thanks. That's how much of a beta he was, right? But unfortunately, beta males can sire children. So I thought about his kids. And I was like, you know what? I'm not going to fucking be an asshole here. I'd already decided before he came up that I wasn't going to take all the cans. But I was like, I'm not going to be an asshole here. And I just looked at him and I went, don't worry, dude. I'm not crazy. And he went, oh, thanks, man. And then I gave him his two fucking cans of beans. Or three. I I think he took three. And I took three. And then some fucking... 
70 year old man named gerald probably got none you know what i thought was the dumbest shit that the supermarkets did they had in the morning they announced oh vulnerable people shopping day and from fucking eight until ten in the morning Elderly people and the disabled could come into Coles and Woolworths to get their food early. That is the dumbest shit I've ever heard. You want to get 100% of the vulnerable population in the world and put them in one spot. Dude, one cough is going to kill everyone's grandma and all their retired, retarded children. That's terrible. That's not what you want to do. The solution to fucking people taking all of the food. Your answer to the question of how do we help elderly people is not to put them in one spot so we can fucking nuke them. That's not the answer. The solution is to deliver food to them. Set up a delivery for seniors, for fuck's sake. Don't put them all in one spot where all of your co-workers who have been just covered in coronavirus from all of the panicked shoppers to catch it from them you know what's crazy they decided to let all of the vulnerable people so the physically disabled right they said you guys can come and shop during these hours and nobody else can so if you weren't limping you can get the fuck out right but they didn't let any of the carers in so all obviously How the fuck do you think all these disabled people got to the shops with their carers? But the supermarket was like, oh, sorry, you're able-bodied. Like, oh, I'm I'm here to to fucking buy wheat bix for a guy who can't swallow on his own instead of fucking unpacking the life support from the SUV I drove here. I just decided to get it for him. Here's my ID. They were like, oh, sorry, looks like you can jog. You're not allowed in. So they had to send all these immunocompromised cunts who can't even fucking walk into the supermarket to get things off the shelves that they can't even reach because they're in a fucking wheelchair. So all of a sudden you got disabled people fighting the elderly for the last can of beans. Okay, I take it back. That sounds awesome. I would love to watch it. Right? But the thing is... When all these old people and all these disabled people got to the supermarket, there was no food. Because all of the fucking healthy people bought it out the night before. We were like, okay, we see what you're doing. You're trying to make sure that these elderly people can fucking eat? No way, they're going to die first. I got kids to feed, I'm buying those wheat bix We all stocked up and took their food. All these elderly people and immunocompromised cunts in wheelchairs got to the supermarket. There was no food. So do you know what they left with? The only thing that all these old people and the disabled left Coles with was coronavirus. And no food. Dude, imagine dying and you can't even have a pie. That'd suck. Alright, so with me yelling about old people and disabled dying out of the way. you, You know what? I feel so much more confident saying whatever the fuck I want. I can't be cancelled. No one gives a fuck. Oh, the comedian Lewis Spears. Shut up. My grandma died. Oh, transphobic Instagram clip. Shush. Grandpa can't breathe. That's really what's happening. Guys, I've started to... St- I've decided to start a trending hashtag because the comedy festival is cancelled. I have to remortgage my home. Shush. I wish I had a fucking home to remortgage. Jesus Christ. Lost a lot of money on that one, boys. Um, oh, that, I, one more thing and then we'll do Miss Lane's bit at the end. Dude, you got to check out my uh, IGTV. I started uploading my stand-up clips on there and they've been going great. I, I put up the uh, the Dreamworld uh, clip and it is going the best. It has like almost 300,000 plays uh, on Instagram, which is fucking crazy. But dude, the comments are crazy because look that dream world bit is it's one of those bits that you watch you laugh and you show one friend you know what i mean like you show one friend who's like i know damo's gonna love this one but you don't show fucking michael because he'll get angry you know what i mean like that dream world bit is like you you share it but you don't Put it on your Facebook profile. You share it to one friend 
who you know has a bit of a fucked up sense of humor. And all of you guys listening, you are that one friend. You're my one friend. Yeah? I know that you cunts are going to love that shit. But I know that a lot of people are not going to like it, right? So I, I've really tapped into here. I've tapped into a lot of despicable cunts who love dark stuff, who love real comedy. That's what I've really found. A lot of despicable cunts. That's what I'm going to call my fan base. We were going with losers for a while, but that's a little bit lame. We're going with despicable cunts, all right? You fucking despicable cunt. And that's what I've really tapped into. Now, what's happened is it's got like almost 300,000 plays and it's got like 25,000, maybe a little bit less than that, 20,000 likes, right? That's an amazing ratio. Got a bunch of positive comments. But the thing is, it's getting a lot of fucking angry people because the main thing that makes shit travel on social media is not quality. It's not truth. It's not information. It's not relatability. The number one thing that travels well on social media is outrage and hatred. That's what the algorithm loves. Because what does outrage get? Engagement. What does engagement mean? Screen time. What does screen time mean? More ads. What does more ads mean? Money. So all these social media companies are just manipulating you into becoming the most angry cunt imaginable so that they can sell you a fucking app, right? And that's what's happened. Have a look at the comments. It is hilarious. It, here's the thing, because this is, I guess for Instagram TV, this is viral. Like 300,000 is pretty fucking good. Like to, to put it in context, my other stand-up clips have like 80,000, 110, 20,000. 10,000, 50. So like 300 is really, really good. That's like, I suppose, viral for me, right? So I've talked about this before, but my theory was vi with viral stuff is first it gets shown to your fans, right? And then it gets shown to all of your fans because it's going really well. So it gets shown to your hardcore people who will almost definitely like your stuff. And then it gets shown to the more casual fans if the hardcore people love it. And then if the casual fans like it, then it gets shown to people who could be your fans, but maybe haven't heard about you yet. Or maybe they've watched one video, one or two. You never normally subscribe to someone off one video. It's when you see them two or three times, you're like, all right, I like that guy. I'm going to pay attention, right? So then it gets shown to that third circle of people who could like you. People who probably will like you. And a lot of those people will like you. Some of them will be like, nah, it's not really my thing. It's all right, but it's not really for me. And if a lot of those people who could like your stuff engage with it and enjoy that video, then it goes even more viral. And it just gets shown to everyone. And that's where you encounter the fourth and final circle, right? That is people who would never like you, who would never in a million years, no matter what you did, would ever, ever like you. That's like when I'm on YouTube and a video is going so viral that I see a guy playing death metal incredibly well and I watch it and I go, fuck, that's terrible. No matter how good he is, I will never like this. I don't have it in my brain to enjoy that no matter how it's played, how it's done, and who does it. I can't like it. This video has hit that stage where it is being shown to people who, no matter how funny the joke is, and let's be real, fucking hilarious. I did it to thousands of people in the room. By far the best joke that I had ever written at that point. I've written better stuff now, but at that point in my career, the best joke by far that I had ever written and the most positively received uh, from audiences in the room and then online when I put it out. But bro, I've hit the fourth circle and they fucking hate it. <laughs> they are not happy. They do not like it at all. Let's read some of these comments here. And I've had a, I've gone back at a few people because I think it's very funny. Uh, because at this point with the dream old stuff, I'm not getting cancelled for it. It should have happened, right? I've, it's been out for years. It's not happening now. So I don't give a fuck who gets mad about it. It's funny to me. So um, here's... What do we have? A few comments. Um, where are we? Uh, fuck you. I think it's funny. All the Australian who died in the wildfires... Like, yeah, okay, cool, bro. 
Really got me there. Um, why would you ever joke about death? See, that is a perfect example of the fourth circle. Someone who would never like me. Wasn't I just talking about the fucking Holocaust like 20 minutes ago? If you don't like jokes about death, you will never like me. No matter what I joke about. Because chances are, you might like one joke 20 seconds later, I'm talking about death. That's just me. You will never like me. And that's fine. But it's really hit that fourth circle. Here we are. Um, British comedy, in a nutshell. It's hit the fifth circle. Fucking morons. Um, tragic deaths are not funny. <laughs> not funny, didn't laugh. Uh, well, there's a really good one here. Oh, this is my favorite one. Okay. So, this African-American girl comments, and she goes, uh, Okay, but why did they laugh when he talked about the deaths? He didn't even make a joke, he just told them what happened, and everyone in the audience laughed. Now, if you've seen the joke, which you probably have, I go, I explain the deaths, and then I say, that's not funny at all. There is nothing funny about that. Now, the reason people laugh is not because the deaths are funny, they are laughing in anticipation of the jokes I am about to tell. That's why that's funny. It's called suspense, right? It's used a lot. I talk about a horrible thing, and you laugh because you go, ha, oh, he's probably going to make a joke about it. I'm excited. That's what that is, right? So one, this person might be autistic. Two, there's something wrong with their brain, okay? So she's like, why did they laugh when he described this? And then she wrote a giant comment. I'm not going to read all of it, but she did a follow-up, okay? So she wrote, um, I genuinely wonder what was up with that. That behavior felt a bit demonic, honestly. I actually got his joke, but his fans cheering and laughing after hearing about someone's death when he didn't even tell a joke is what ruined any dark humor he had. And then someone else who's offended said, we are demons walking the earth. And then she, the original commenter, wrote, I don't know if you're joking or if you are admitting it. There are theories stating that white people come from demons and not humans, that they are called Nephilim. And I'm not sure if you're admitting it, and I'm hoping I don't take it serious, or you are really fucking with me and scaring the shit out of me in order to get a good laugh. I'm hoping like hell you're doing the second option because I'm scared. So... I made a joke that offended this woman so much that she thinks that I am a demon. <laughs> and you know what? I can't really dispute it because there are 300 people who look like me. They're all white. It's Australia. They're all laughing. That's kind of demonic. She's got a point. Maybe white people are demons or Nephilim, right? You fucking got us. You know, we all know Hillary Clinton's doing satanic rituals. Maybe that's because she's white. Jeffrey Epstein, Harvey Weinstein, this bitch has a point. All right. I am addicted to mobile games and am abusing myself for trophies. Fuck. Hi, Lewis. Love your shit. Uh, though I'm a massive fan of yours, I am too poor to buy tickets. Well, bro, I'm too poor to do shows now. So we're in the same boat. Looks like that really paid off for you there. Um, I did do a $5 digital download for your special, and it's awesome. Thank you very much. That is, uh, at this point in time, incredibly appreciated. If you don't have death threats, don't scare me yet. Hey, now's the fucking time, all right? Anyway, on to my addiction and self-abuse. My name is uh, William, uh, It's and I am 12. It started with me downloading this game called Brawl Stars. I loved it at first, but about 7 months in and 7,000 trophies, shit happened and I hated it. Also, progress slowed. From there, I ended up harming myself for losing, punching myself and destroying things with the occasional bruise uh, or blood. Uh, from there, I did anything I could do to get a competitive advantage. I stole my mum's credit card. After a month, I had some suicidal thoughts, but no attempts on the outside. I stopped communicating with friends as much and... Uh, lost a couple of them. I want to stop, but I'm too addicted to stop, as well as my remaining friends. I'm too addicted to stop, and so are my friends. As well as my friends keep on. My friends are playing. That's I, You've written a weird. You're 12, so I'm not going to abuse you. Can I have some, can I have some help? Thank you. Uh, okay, so... <laughs> Jeez, you... <laughs> 
during a fucking pandemic and quarantine where you can't leave the house, you've picked a real bad time to be addicted to the fucking phone, haven't you? That's not good, is it? That's a bad time to be addicted to the phone. Dude, if I was addicted to fucking running on the, on the, in the street around people, I'm sweet. Quarantine, that's fucking saved my life. You, my friend, it's like they've locked up an ice addict in a fucking igloo made from ice, but not the frozen kind. Um, look, okay, here's what's, what you need to do. You need to tell your parents what you need to do. You're 12, okay? You were a child. So you need to tell your parents. If you are going through something and you are a child, you need to tell your parents or at the, at the least your teachers. But it looks like the school is going to get closed down. So you need to tell your parents. You need to sit them down. You need to explain it to them. You need to open up on your phone the screen time section of your phone and show them, this is how much I'm using my phone. Please take it away from me. And you need to get rid of your smartphone. You don't need it. All right? Let's be honest. You don't need a fucking smartphone. You can use Facebook, Twitter, YouTube on your laptop. You don't need it on your phone. Okay? You're fucking 12. You don't need a smartphone. Show it to them. Get them to take away your phone. And get a fucking shitty Nokia where you can only play Snake. That's the only way you're going to get over this. Bro, you're addicted to fucking smartphone games. Get rid of the phone. And then learn how to entertain yourself without technology. I think that is a hu- I am so fucking grateful that I, that I had a short period in my life where I did not have a phone. I did not have the internet. I learned how to have fun without those things. You look at kids, and I know this is a fucking boomer moment, but you look at children today and... Do they know how to have fun without technology? I don't know if they do. And this is this is something that will probably only impact them once they're fucking 20, you know. But if the if the only thing you know is screens and then you finish school, like what kind of hobby do you have? You know what I mean? Like I feel like it's really going to hit some people hard of like, "Oh shit." Because you go to work and you look at screens, and me especially, all I'm doing is editing, right? Editing and staring into cameras with bright lights. I'm going to go fucking blind, (laughs) right? And then I come home, and sometimes I want to play video games, but a lot of the times I just look, a screen is the last thing I want to fucking look at. And for a minute, I was like, holy shit, I hate uh, screens. I hate screens, I'm over screens, but I have nothing else to entertain myself with. So then I thought back and I was like, well, what the fuck did I do before screens? And I was like, well, I really liked comics. I really liked Warhammer and I really liked reading. Those are three things that I probably would not have found if I just had the, the world in my pocket. You know what I mean? Like just an unlimited resource of information and fun in my fucking pocket. I probably wouldn't even have thought, oh, Maybe miniatures could be fun. Maybe a board game could be cool. I never would have thought that. And now, when I get home, I'm like, oh, fuck. I, I can read uh, my book. I can read a comic book. I could fucking paint some miniatures. Or I could learn something. Uh, whereas I feel like a lot of... Obviously, this kid, you know, he has no idea what to do with himself. So, that's something I would recommend to you, man. Is uh, you need to, one, tell your parents. Show them your issue. And get them to help you with it. And if tell them, this is serious and I need help. Did my fucking camera stop? All right, my fucking camera stopped, so we're under these cameras, right? You need to you need to tell them that you need some help, um, and then I suppose uh, you need to teach yourself how to have fun without it, because that's that's another thing. Like you're obviously you don't know what to do with yourself, so maybe you need to pick up a sport, pick up a martial art. You're 12. Your parents need to pay for something for you to do. I would get them to go, hey, I'm addicted to my phone and I need, some, I need a hand with some extracurricular activities. Get into martial art. That'll teach you discipline. I did that when I was younger. Did martial arts for fucking five years. And it was great. And then I did tennis and I did some other shit. If you guys are broke, if you don't have money, I mean, we didn't have money. We were doing that shit. It's not that expensive to go to a karate lesson once a week. Um... That's what I'd recommend, man. You need some hobbies that are not screens. So it's not video games either because that's just fucking transferring it. You're looking at a small game, now you're on a big game. 
You need to fucking transfer. You need to don't transfer it. You need to fucking find something else. Get into reading. Get into building shit. Something with your hands that is real. You know, that's not a screen. I think that'll really help. And tell your parents uh, because that's a very serious problem. And if you have suicidal thoughts, you can call the Kids Helpline. Really, really, really good resource. That goes for anyone that's under 18. Call the Kids Helpline. Or even if you're an adult and you know a younger sibling or if you have a child who has suicidal thoughts, you can call the Kids Helpline and they will tell you what to do with a kid because they're the experts and they, they talk to adults all the time about kids. Um... And if you're an adult, there's also all of the other helplines beyond blue. I only know the ones that are in Australia. Just Google it. It's fucking everywhere. All right. So thank you very much for listening. Um, and on a serious note, if uh, if you would like to, support me on Patreon because that would be really, really good. Or even any... You know what? Now is really a time where money's tight and we need to be considerate of everyone, I think. So like... I've decided that I am not going to cancel my gym membership because there's a little local one. Now, if it was fitness first, of fitness, fuck off. I would cancel that shit. But it's 10 bucks a week and yeah, they're going to get shut down and yeah, I can't go. But you know what? They're a small locally owned business. I'm going to keep that shit going because uh, I can, you know, afford to do that. Um, but entertainers are hit really, really hard by this. Everyone that I know is fucked. And and most comedians especially, they're not like musicians. They don't have music streaming. They're not like me. They don't have the ability to make videos. They are just fucked. A lot of comedians, the vast majority in Australia, the only time they make money is when they do Melbourne. So if there's any way you can support a creative artist that you like, your favorite, even if it's not me, you know, support them on Patreon, buy a t-shirt, uh, grab a download product that they have your favorites support them because this is a time where you know we should support everyone and i know that fucking uh, entertainment is often the first thing they get chopped because we're not an essential service we're not fucking paramedics and all that kind of shit and i totally get that but you know it is a big industry and we are people so i'm 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 gonna be fine uh but if you can find it in your hearts to, su to support a, an artist that is your favorite I really do recommend that because there are a lot of us that are doing it very, very tough uh, and they don't have the ability like I do to, to create videos and shit like that because uh, this impacts us all and I think we should all look after each other. Also, do something nice for an old person, but don't fucking go anywhere near them. Check up on your oldies. Do, they need, do you need anything from the supermarket? I'm going because they shouldn't be, all right? So I'm going to talk to you guys next Sunday. I'm going to be ramping up the online content. And if you want early access to everything that I do, Patreon is the way to do it. I'm going to go through my Patreon. I'm going to revamp that shit. And I'm going to start adding a bunch of extra rewards, uh, extra things that I'm going to be doing because uh, the content's going to go into overdrive. I've, uh, yeah, that's what I'm doing. So, uh, all right. I'll talk to you guys next Sunday. I hope you guys have a fucking shit one. And uh, I hope I don't have coronavirus. <laughs>